for joining us on tonight for Bible study. We thank and praise God for allowing us another chance to come to you. Please share this video with your family and friends. The question was asked of a realtor. How do you decide on the right price for a home? The realtor said that several factors help determine the cost. But the bottom line was this. Your home is worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So let's use this solid bit of real estate wisdom to establish once and for all that our lives are worth whatever someone is willing to pay for it. Think about it for a moment. Jesus Christ, the sinless Lamb of God, willingly left the glory of heaven to come to earth where he would be misunderstood, betrayed, and brutally executed. And he did that because he was determined that our lives were worth the cost. We forget too easily the incredible value that Christ places on us as human beings. Perhaps it's easy for you to believe the truth about Jesus' love for other people, but you struggle to believe it about yourself. If that's the case, then place your name in the beloved text of John 3.16. For God so loved Carolyn that he gave his only begotten son that if Carolyn believes in him, Carolyn should not perish but have everlasting life. If you look only to a husband, to children, a career, or friends, you can never get an accurate reading of your true value. The reality is that Almighty God alone determines that. And he decided before you were even born that you were worth the life of his only son. You are a treasured daughter you are a treasured son of the King of Kings. Praise God. Jesus paid with his life the price he believes you are worth. For that unselfish act of love, we owe Jesus our lives. We just thank and praise God for allowing his son to come down to this mean world. We thank him for that. That's why we say, Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. We lift our voice to your name. For you are so worthy to be praised. You are worthy of all the honor and all the praise. 
eternal God in heaven, we praise you. We worship you. Lord, we certainly praise your name for you are worthy. You deserve the honor. You deserve the glory. You are the one that's worthy of our praise. God, we thank you another privilege, Father God, for this privilege again to come before you. We know, Father God, that you are holy and we are unholy. We thank you, Father God, for blessing us and keeping us. We ask you, Father God, to continue to walk with us and continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us. We thank you now for health and strength. We thank you for your blessings, Father God. We thank you for untangible blessings. We thank you, Father God, for tangible blessings. We thank you for those things that we have often seen and, and we're not grateful. But tonight, Lord, we thank you. We understand that you are God. We understand, Father God, without you, we are nothing. We understand, Father God, that you have blessed us again. And it's a blessing to listen to your word. It's a blessing to hear your word. It's a blessing to read your word. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us through your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Yeah, Lord, we, we bless your name. For you are worthy. You are worthy, Father God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are worthy. There's none like you. Thank you, Lord. the name of Jesus. God is worthy. He is worthy Amen. of all our praise. He is worthy of every lick, every bit of our praise. God is worthy. Thank you again for joining us for another Bible study night. Thank you for being a part of our service. Thank you for being a part of the group that desire to hear the word. Thank you Amen. for joining us. If you would, share the video, please, ma'am, please, sir. Go ahead and hit share, then hit share now that your family members and your friends will hear the word of God. It's the word of God that makes us strong. It's the word of God that blesses us. You don't even have to start a watch party anymore. You just hit share and share now. Those two buttons will let you know that you are doing a great thing for the Lord and men, women, boys, and girls all over the world will hear the word of God. This is one of our ways of evangelism during this time. Amen. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Tonight, two verses, uh, two verses that are tied together in this one pericope. This is a sub pericope of the overall pericope. The pericope goes from verses 12 to 19, but there are about three sub pericopes within this one. There are three different thoughts in this one pericope. There are three different thoughts. So we're going to take the first thought, verses 12 through 13, 1 Thessalonians Verses 12 and 13 uh, is the first portion of this, this pericope. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 and 13. When you found it, you will discover these words. And we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. Verse 13, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Look at what he says. He says, and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. The Apostle Paul, if you remember, he has been talking about the day of the Lord and the coming of the Lord. 
the word, the, the theology here is eschatology. Eschatology is the study of last things, the study of things that will fulfill the future. And tonight, Paul stops for a moment. He moves from futuristic things back to the present. He has been telling us, he's been telling us for the last two chapters, he's been telling us that the dead in Christ shall rise when, when Jesus stops in midair. And then he continues in chapter five after he comes out of chapter four and reminds us to comfort one another in the fact that Jesus is coming back. Then he says to us in chapter five, the day of the Lord is coming. But when he gets to verse number 12, he stops talking about futuristic stuff and he brings them back to the present time. Look at what God does. He says, and we urge you, brethren, brethren, brothering, or brother, he, we urge you, it's pronounced brethren, we, he urge you, brothering, or brethren, he urge you, brother, meaning that he is urging, he is beseeching. He is asking. He is requesting. This word urge means that I beseech you, brother. I urge of you. I ask of you. I request of you. He says that I, I'm asking you very strongly. I pray. I entreat you. I ask of you. And he's talking to the brethren. He's talking to the brethren. He's talking to brothers in Christ. Those who are saved. Those who are in the church of Thessalonica. And guess what? He's talking to those who are in the church of New Beginning. Oh, yeah. Says to us today, I urge you, I beseech you, I request of you. I even pray and entreat you. He says, whatever you do, brother. Recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. During this time, Paul writes this letter to the church at Thessalonica. He's not just writing for them to know that they need to honor the pastor. But he's also writing to let them know that they need to honor all leadership in the church. During this time, there was a strong uh, atmosphere for elders in the church. The Apostle Paul says to them tonight in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 12, he says to us tonight, I beseech you, brethren, that you recognize. This, this word recognize is the same word that is used in King James, which means to know. King James says, know those who labor among you. This word know means to respect and to appreciate. So this word recognize means to know those among you. Know your leaders. But the word know means to respect them. It means to appreciate them. Appreciate your Sunday school teachers. Know them. Respect them. Appreciate your, your church leaders. First impressions, Ursula leaders. Appreciate your media ministry leaders. Uh, appreciate and respect your deacons, your elders, your discipleship leaders, such as men leaders and, and women leaders. Respect them. Honor them. Appreciate them. And even tonight, y'all, he says, respect the pastor. Yeah. He says, he says, know them, recognize them, uh, re respect them and appreciate them. The leaders of your church. What people need to know, the word pastor means feeder. We are all sheep. But our pastors, our leaders, our pastor is our feeder. We ought to appreciate our feeder. If we are sheep, sheep 
appreciate their feeder. How much more should we as humans appreciate and respect our feeder? I've, I've heard it. I've heard it from several people. And it, it's, it's a compliment to me. I've heard it from several people. Pastor Davis, why do you do the things you do for Pastor Richard Rose? Why do you go out of your way to respect him, to appreciate him? Because he's my feeder. He, he feeds me. He, he instructs me in the word of God. Every pastor ought to have a pastor. When I was under Pastor Manson Johnson, he was my feeder. I respected him. I appreciated him. I got to know him. I recognized him as my feeder. Pastor Billy Ray Love, he was my feeder. I respected him and recognized him as my feeder. I appreciated him. Pastor Roger, uh, Pastor, Pastor Pastor Roger Reed, I respected him. I appreciated him. I knew him. I, every chance I, I, I got, I, I shared with him. I, I listened to him. Pastor Allen at the Markham Missionary Baptist Church, I respected him. I appreciated him. The text declares that we ought to appreciate and respect our leaders, recognize them. This word recognize means to know, and you ought to know with respect, and you ought to know with appreciation. Back home when I grew up, I, I, I couldn't afford to argue with a pastor. I couldn't afford to dis, disrespect the pastor because we were taught respect for them. We were taught to appreciate them. When the preacher came over, and he it looked like he came over every Sunday. He looked like he showed up. We had pastoral pastoral Sundays, but the fact that it matters, it looked like that joker showed up every Sunday. And we could not eat until after he has eaten. And whenever he wanted to eat, he ate. And we just grew up respecting him. We grew up appreciating him because we were taught at an early age that he's your feeder. He is the one who takes the meal from the Lord and chews it up and puts it in your mouth. It is the symbol of a brand new baby. When you're trying to get a baby off a bottle, when you're trying to get the baby to go from, from milk to meat, he can't eat a whole steak, he can't eat a hamburger on his own. He wanted to. He tried to put it in his mouth. But many times, a close family member, a father or a mother, will take the food that they're eating, chew it up, take it out of their mouth and put it into the baby's mouth. That's the responsibility of the pastor. That's the responsibility of the elder. That's the responsibility of your leadership to take what they are eating, the word of God, chew it up and deliver it to you. He's your feeder. That's why preachers and pastors cannot study just to stand to give a message. They have to study when others are not studying. They have to eat the word when others are not eating the word. So much so until they're ready to serve the word at any given note. Without any interruption, they ought to be willing to chew it up and put it in your mouth because he's your feeder. Now, let me tell you this. If your pastor, your elder is your feeder, why would you disrespect him? Why, why would you argue with him? Why, why would you not appreciate him? If you never give him a dime, you are, he ought to know that you appreciate him. And when you appreciate somebody, you understand that you are able to give whatever you have and they appreciate what you give. And let me just share this with you. There are some members of the New Beginning Church that you just can't talk about me in a negative way around in their presence. 
There are some members of the New Beginning Church, and I thank God for them, that you just cannot disrespect me as their pastor. There are some members of the New Beginning Church and there are some members of Turning Hearts Ministries that you just cannot say anything bad, anything bad about Matthew A. Davis in their presence because they'll straighten you out. Mm -hmm. There are some other members <laughs> that will join in with you and that ought to tell you that I'm not their feet. They haven't recognized me yet as their feeder. But the only thing I have to do is continue to feed, <laughs> continue to give the meal. And as I continue to serve the table, continue to give the meal, if they are saved or if they get saved, then they will learn to appreciate and respect. Apostle Paul says here, I urge you, I beg you, I beseech you, brethren. He says in King James, know him recognize him in the new King James. And this word recognize, this word know, means to respect and appreciate. I respect every pastor I've been on. I respect every leader that I've followed. And the reason why I respect them is because I have made a conscious decision to follow the leader. I made a conscious decision on my own without people even prompting me to follow the leader. When I did understand, I still followed the leader. When I, when I did not really grasp what he was saying. See, the word know, when you know and appreciate him, you know his heart. When you respect him, you know his heart. The leader will always make some mistakes. Regardless of who the leader is, he will make mistakes. And he, many times, he will make mistakes even trying to feed you. Even while he's trying to do what's right, he will make mistakes. But when you show love to him, when you respect him, you appreciate him, you know his heart is one to feed you. You know the going phrase now when people get ready to skip from one church to the other, he, I'm no longer getting fed. Well, if you're going to be fed, you got to come to the table. And when you're going to be fed, you got to come to the table with the right attitude. A lot of pastors have had a rough time because people have not respected him, have not appreciated him, have not known his heart. Because once you get to know his heart, then you will know even when he makes a mistake, you ought to pray for him. Paul says in verse 12, I'm in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul says, and we urge you, brethren, to recognize those who labor among you. Recognize those who labor among you. Who Recognize those who do work among you. Re recognize those who toil. This word labor means to toil. With, and it, and toil means to not give up but keep laboring. Recognize those who work hard. This this, this word, this word, this word uh, labor means to work hard, to, to toil. And it, it means to toil to the point of being wearied. I, I, told, I told the New Beginning Church on Sunday that that song just is a miserable song that says, I've been running for Jesus and I'm not tired yet. <laughs> the reason why you're not tired yet is you haven't been running long enough. You haven't been running hard enough. You haven't been running strong enough and you haven't been accomplishing enough because I get tired. I run for Jesus. I get tired emotionally. I get tired socially. I get tired spiritually. I get tired physically. I get flat tired. The Bible says here, honor those, recognize those, re re respect those, appreciate those who labor, who toil, those who get tired in the hard work. It says appreciate them. It says appreciate them who labor among you and those who are over you in the Lord and admonish you. He says, he says to us today that you know, you got to understand that there are some people over you in the Lord. This word, uh, this word over is the same word where we get the word to stand before. 
And as the man of God stands before you, and he also stands before God, he is over you. It comes from the same word. We get the word to practice. Where we get the word to rule. Where we get the word to maintain. And let me just share with something with you. It's not a member that is blamed when things go wrong. It is the pastor who blamed when it goes wrong. Boy, if that pastor had done it this way, if he had done it that way, then we wouldn't be in the shape we're in. It may have been an outsider that, that messed everything up, but the pastor gets the blame. The Bible says respect them, appreciate them, know their hearts. Those who labor among you and those who are over you, those who practice over you, those, those who have rule over you, respect them. Since not only do you respect them because they got rule over you, but also respect them because they're in the Lord. Because they're in the Lord. They're, they're not in foolishness. They're in the Lord. He says respect them. They, they're in the Lord. They, the, those who have rule over you, those who are over you, those who maintain over you, who are in the Lord. And let me just park right here and say, if you are in a church where your pastor cannot be respected by you, you need to find you another church. If you are following a pastor who is ruling over you, who has account over you, a pastor who you cannot respect. You can't respect his, his character. You can't re respect his pastorship. You can't respect his mannerism. You can't respect how he preaches. You can't not appreciate what he does and how he feeds you. Don't stay around and be a problem. Find you somebody who you can respect. Go somewhere where you can sit in the corner and look from a distance because that's what folk do. They respect people that they can't touch. They respect people that they don't have their phone numbers to. They respect people where they don't know where they live. They respect people who mistreat them. They respect people who dog them out. But the text says respect those who labor, work hard, and feed you. He says, admonish you, those who reprove you. And that this word reprove means to get, I mean, uh, this word reprove, this word admonish means to reprove. It means to gently nudge you back in place. This word admonish and reprove, th these words means to warn you. I remember warning somebody and I got a tongue lashing for it. But you know what? When something else came up, I warned another person. Because we as leaders, we as pastors, cannot stop warning people because folk don't like it. Or because folk don't like us. We are called to warn you. He says those who admonish you, those who exhort you, those who warn you. He says... In verse number 12, offer respect to them. Give them respect. Give them appreciation. And I'm not talking about a pastor appreciation. Those things ought to happen anyway. Those things ought not, you, you should not appreciate your pastor once a year. You ought to appreciate him day after day after day because of his works, because of his labor, because of his never ceasing prayer for you. He says, bless those who are over you in the Lord. Let's look at verse number 13. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 13 says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, for their work's sake, be at peace among yourselves. Look at what Paul says here. He says, and to esteem them very highly. This phrase, very highly esteem, esteem them very highly. This phrase means to hold in the highest regard. Growing up, we, we respected pastors. We, 
We respected elders. We respected deacons. And we held them to the highest regard. Not that they were perfect, not that they didn't say wrong things, not that they didn't do wrong things, but they were held to the highest regard. This word esteem means to be held to the highest regard. This word esteem, esteem means to value them. The word esteem means to, to be affectionate toward them. And it's written in a tense by which we do it continuously. So he says, to esteem them very highly in love. He says, to esteem them very highly in love. This, this word esteem just simply means to consider them and deem them high in authority. And you respect them to the highest degree. No, it's not that they are your God. It's not that they, they are somebody you ought to worship. But Respect is not hard to come by. It means to, to bless those who have ruled over you. To esteem them very highly in love. To esteem them very highly. To, to have the highest respect and to do it continuously. Continuously. I know pastors mess up every single day. But, but it says to esteem them highly, very highly in love. This word love means charity, means to be dear to them. This word love means to be affectionately benevolent to them. So this word love talks about a gift. <laughs> it is a gift. It, it even includes what we know as a love feast. And maybe that's why we invited the preacher to the house to have a feast on a regular basis. Because it says here in the text, very highly in love. It means to esteem them highly in love, be dear to them to the point of a benevolent feast. The word benevolence is a gift. This word benevolence means to support. To the point of giving a feast for them. And then it says, for their work's sake. For their work's sake. For their work's sake. Their work's sake. In other words, because of the nature of his work, because of the nature of his employment, because of the nature of his labor, because of the nature of his doing, because of the nature of his deeds, Respect him, highly esteem him because his work's sake. Let me just share with you. There is nobody on planet Earth that has been called to do what your leader who has authority over you has been called to do. There's nobody. Engineers do what they do, but they, they are not to be highly esteemed compared to the preaching. Let me just share with you. Any preacher, any pastor that forsake the ministry to be a politician, he just took a step down. Any preacher, any pastor, any spiritual leader that forsake the call of the ministry to be the president of the United States of America, he just took a step down. Because there is no one on planet Earth who, who is called to do what he's called to do. The preacher blesses the baby coming in. And he blesses the adult in the baby when he leaves here. He says, Lord, bless this baby. We give this baby back to you. We pray that this baby... Follow your godly leadership. Lord, we pray that this baby be a missionary for you. We pray that this baby, Father God, do what you called him to do and be obedient to your word. That's what we pray over babies at christenings and, and at baby blessings. But when life is over down here, the preacher makes his way to the cemetery. And he says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Earth to earth, do I return this baby, this adult, 
this child, this old person, this young person back to the dust, back to the earth, back to ashes. The president can't do that. Matter of fact, the undertaker can't do it because the, on, the undertaker only speaks at the cemetery if he's in right order. He only speaks at the cemetery when the preacher gives way to it. The undertaker has to wait for the preacher to pause and say, now you can speak now, sir. You're getting paid, but you can't speak until the preacher says speak if you're going to stay in order says to highly esteem them, very highly in love for his work's sake. His work's sake, his deeds, his doing, his labor, his work. You cannot get past the responsibility of your spiritual leader. And everybody needs a spiritual leader. Every person needs somebody who can lead them spiritually. If you don't have a pastor today and you listen to me, you need a pastor. And I'm willing to be your pastor. What you need to understand is that we must begin a campaign to highly esteem our spiritual leaders. Only a fool would make a statement like this. He put on his britches the same way I do. That's a lie. Only a fool would make a statement. He's just a man just like I am. That's a lie. I am called, others are called to feed the people. Mm -hmm. We must feed the people. God deliver us from preachers who won't feed the people. God deliver us from preachers who, who have Saturday night specials where they wait to Saturday night to prepare for Sunday morning. We are feeders and we feed sheep. You see, you slop hogs, but you feed sheep. Hogs eat anything. And sometimes I've watched preachers stand to deliver the word of God. And I wanted to say, suey, suey, suey. Suey, suey, suey. Because I've seen them butcher the word, and I call it the slopping of hogs. We are feeders. We feed sheep. We are called to feed sheep. And next time somebody get on a campaign to downrate your pastor, you let them know he's my feeder. And because he's my feeder, you can't talk about him around me. That's a good, joyous church member. You can't, you can't talk about my pastor around me. You can't mistreat him around me. He's my feeder. And guess what? He knows that I know he's my feeder. So every pastor needs a pastor and every person needs a pastor. Every person needs a spiritual leader, someone who is over you. If you can't stand for people to be over you, you can't, and you're not really, you're just existing on planet earth. You're not really living. Because when you go to your job, somebody's going to be over you. And if you got issues with people being over you, You'll say nothing at work, but when you get to church, you want to stick your chest out. You see, I've come to the conclusion, especially with men and with some women, I've come to the conclusion, if they don't run anything at home, they try to run everything at church. And see, some people have fooled deacons and make, made them think that their responsibility is to keep the pastor in check. It's not, you're not called to do that. You're called to serve. There are, some staff, there are some staff members who think they are called to keep the pastor in check. That's not your calling. Your, your calling is to serve. And the greatest is he who serves. And you, you ought to serve well. And the Bible says you ought to highly esteem him for his work's sake. The nature of his work is like none other. You ought to esteem him, lift him, bless him. And finally, he says, be at peace among yourselves. In other words, live in peace among yourselves. It is the responsibility of the pastor, the leader, the spiritual guide of the church to remind you to make sure you respect the pastor, to make sure that you appreciate the pastor, to make sure that you appreciate and respect spiritual leadership. 
value them, be affectionate toward them. And then he says in verses 12 and 13 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, make it continually happen. Make it happen continually. You ought to do it over and over again, over and over again. God's grace is new every morning. God's mercy takes place every day. And every morning he gives up and gives you a new mercy. And he, you ought to bless him continually. And you ought to appreciate the leadership, the spiritual leadership that God has given you. You ought to appreciate him over and over again. Let me, let me just look at one other, one other passage here in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I want to read one verse here. Hebrews chapter 13. The Spirit of will lead us from, from verse 17 to 19, but I just want to read one verse. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17. And you can go back later and read verses 17 through 19. But verse 17. Obey those who rule over you. Hebrews 13, 17. Obey those who rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. Let them do so with joy and not with grief for that would be unprofitable to you. Look at what he says. He says, obey them. Obey who? Those who have rules, spiritual rule over you. Those who have spiritual rule over you, obey them. And he says, and be submissive. Why are you being submissive? Because they watch out for your soul. Not only do they watch out for your soul, they must give an account for what they do, what they say, and how they carry themselves. Be obedient to those who have rule over you and be submissive for they watch out for your souls as those who must give account. I never wanted to do this. I never wanted to preach. I never wanted to pastor, but God has called me to do it. And now I love nothing more to do than this because God has called me to do it. He says, let them do it with joy. <laughs> I didn't want to do it because I didn't see much joy among the pastors, much joy among the preachers. Says He says, you who are members ought to be willing to allow those who are leaders to lead you, be submissive to them who have rule over you to lead you because they watch out for your soul. And so much so, they have to give an account. And then he says, let them do this leadership with joy. Let them do their pastoring with joy and not with grief. Say, let them do it with joy. You make sure that you are not the thorn in the preacher's side. <laughs> you make sure that you are not the thorn in the teacher's side. Make sure you are not the thorn in the elders and the deacon's side. You make sure that you help him to do it with joy. And not with grief. And look at look at the promise here. The promise is, if you don't let him do it with joy, if you if you make him have grief, this is the promise. It would be unprofitable to you. It would be unprofitable to you. It would be messed up for you. In other words, you will not be benefited. Matter of fact, it would be a curse. It would be unprofitable. I'm going to underline that, 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 that word unprofitable. It won't be good for you. Matter of fact, it'll be bad for you. I thank God that I, I, can, I can pastor with joy. I thank God that members of the New Beginning Church understand that it's their responsibility to allow me to pastor with great joy and not with grief. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord. And tonight, I want to make sure that you understand, if you choose to give the man of God or the leadership of the church issues, if you choose to make them grieve, it will not go well for you. It will be unprofitable to you. It will be unprofitable. That's why, that's why you have to make a decision. And your decision ought to be at a church 
where you can follow the leadership and not gripe and grumble at a church where you don't have to complain on the leadership where you believe enough about this man's spiritual walk that he wouldn't do nothing wrong to you. He's your feeder. He feeds sheep. And if you want to get slopped by a hog, you go where they're slopping hogs. He says, respect him. He says, appreciate him. He says, value him. He says, highly regard him. Hold him in the highest regard. And do it with affection. And do it continually. Lord have mercy. He says, respect him, give him affection, give him appreciation, know his heart. All this he says in two verses, for his work's sake. Those who labor. If you got a sovereign pastor, you need to leave. If you got a pastor that won't labor in the word and won't feed you, you at the wrong place. But if you have a pastor who's your feeder, one who labors in the word, one who labors in the work of God, then you ought to make sure that he has great joy when he leaves. Because the text declares, if you don't make sure he has joy in his leadership, that means that you're giving him grief, and that means that it will be unprofitable to you. I've seen men drop on the vine after they attack the pastor. I've seen men, men and women die because they didn't know how to respect and appreciate. I'm saying to you today, don't you be one of those. Be one who will esteem the pastor, esteem the leadership, esteem the teachers, esteem the leadership in, in the body of Christ. If you're here today and you don't have a leader, all this stuff sounds crazy to you. You need to be born again. If, if you've been born again, you ought to understand this very well. <laughs> If you've been born again, don't be rebellious. You ought to understand very well that this is Bible and I didn't just pick it out to pick on you. But I urge you to follow every word of the word. Nowhere in the word is it contradiction. There are no contradictions anywhere. I want to say to you today, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, you can be saved right here tonight. You can be born again. You can guarantee your spot in heaven tonight. If this is you, if you need a savior, I say Jesus is that savior. Let him in today. Let, let Jesus in. He, he will change your, your heart. He will change your mind. What Jesus are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God who died on Calvary. Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God who they buried in a borrowed tomb. Jesus the Christ, the son who rose from the dead. You can let him into your heart tonight. Will you let him in? He, he will change your heart. Let him in today. He'll give you a brand new start if you just let him in today. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to try Jesus. He can make sure you get to heaven. If you want to try Jesus, if you want to be saved tonight, just trust the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you on a cross. That over 2,000 years ago, they buried him in a borrowed tomb. And early that third day morning, he rose from the dead. The Bible says if you can believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. If you believe this story, and if you believe that this story is what you need to get to heaven, just repeat after me. Bow your head and repeat after me and invite Jesus in. Say these words, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In 
Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We believe if you trusted Jesus as your Savior, believing that he died and rose again, we believe that you're born again. We believe that when you die now, you will go to heaven when you die. If this is you, please inbox me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. There may be others of you who are struggling with sin like I do, like so many others in the church do. I want to pray with you tonight and ask God to strengthen us and to bless us. Lord Jesus, I come praying for those who struggle. I pray for those who struggle with sin. I pray for those who struggle with the sin of rebellion. I pray for those, Father God, who think they're smart enough to have their own leadership not follow the leader. I pray, Father God, that you break down this ground. I pray that you change their hearts. I, I pray that you bless them, Father God, to follow good, wholesome leadership, spiritual leadership, leadership that will lead them in a positive way. I pray, Father God, for someone tonight who have caused grief to the leadership. I pray that they repent. I pray that you forgive them. And I pray for godly leadership, Father God, that we will rise up all over this world. That men can follow us securely. Women, boys and girls can follow us and realize that this is a great leader. I pray that you bless the New Beginning Church and all our visitors and all our listeners. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Thank you so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you for, for understanding and appreciating your leadership in your church. Thank you for receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Thank you for repenting of your sin. And it's up to you to repent. You and you alone know what you've done, what you thought, how you act. This is a good moment to get it right with God. Trust the spiritual leadership of your pastor, your leaders. Trust their hearts. Trust the God in them. Because he has to give an account. She has to give an account. For if you trust the God in them, you need to understand one thing really well. And that is, you are able to make his job or her job one of great joy. And when you make it a job of joy, then it becomes profitable. It becomes beneficial. It becomes a blessing to you. Thank you so much. It is now offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. Don't wait till Sunday. You can give tonight. And if you're listening, listening to this broadcast, you can give by one or two means. You can mail your offering in to the New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Or you can send your offering, your tithes, or your sacrificial gifts in by way of Zelle. Our, our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. We appreciate all your gifts, and I want to say to those who have been sending money in, those who have been zelling money in, thank you. Those who have not been in the church building, but they are continuing to give, thank you those who have been in the church and they are continuing to give. Thank you. Thank you for seeing the value of your church and the value of the ministry moving forward in Jesus' name. During our prayer time, we want to lift up those who are continually on our, our prayer list. This is Axel Anissa. I guess uh, I need an interpreter here. Axel Alanis. Axel Alanis. We are praying for the Alanis family. We're praying for Axel Alanis. 
We want to praise God for the praise report of Isabella Cantu. Thank God, thank God for the praise report of this eight month old baby who had COVID, but now we have an opportunity to praise God and honor him. COVID is running wild. COVID is, is taking lives of people. And that's why I'm saying to you, uh, act like COVID is still here. This eight month year old baby, and don't believe the lie that young folk don't get it. Eight months old baby had COVID, but God has delivered her. And we want to offer God a praise report even right now. Thank you for praying for her. Cheryl York, we're praying for her health. We're praying for the health of of Walter and Eloise Johnson. We're praying for the health and strength of J.R. Richard and Lula Richard. And we're praying for Miss Vivian Azaha. We're praying for their health. We're praying that God continues to bless them and keep them. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the praise report of this eight month you old baby. Thank you, Lord. We we magnify. We know you, Father God, as Jehovah Rophi. Jehovah Rophi, God who heals us. We thank you for healing this baby. We thank you for showing your presence. We thank you for manifesting yourself. Now, Father God, we ask you to allow this situation this healing to draw all men to you. Bless, Father God, that the parents will see you, that neighbors and friends will see you, and they will honor your name. Now we come lifting up those who we, we have called out and those we may not know. Heal and touch as only you can. Bless as only you can. Deliver as only you can. Lord, we thank you now for the victory, and we glorify your name. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen. Thank God. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world. As we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, "In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.